Africa, of course, was actually achieving uh, improved economic growth in recent years. The policies were getting better. Uh, the attractiveness of Africa as an investment site was definitely on the rise. Africa's uh, average economic growth had reached about 6% per year, which was quite high by historical standards and seemed to be rather robust, except for a collapse of the world economy. Now the growth rate is falling uh, sharply. Uh, current forecasts say maybe 2% growth, which isn't enough to keep up with population. Certainly is not enough to keep up with the uh, a needed decline of poverty rates. So this is a crisis for Africa as it is for the world. And this is one, of course, where Africa is purely the recipient. It had no, uh, no aspect at all of uh, contributing to this crisis. Moreover, Africa is actually feeling two sharp crises from the outside, the second being the climate change crisis, because all over this continent are increased uh, frequency of droughts, more severity of droughts, uh, more uh, irregularity of rainfall patterns, more extreme weather events uh, such as floods. And so Africa is being buffeted by two things coming from the outside. The one thing that's not coming from the outside is the kind of help that the rich world promised. The rich world uh, stands uh, actually uh, essentially in default of its commitments, very clear commitments made in the year 2000, again in the year 2002, again in the year 2005, that there would be a substantial increase of financing for development if Africa did the right things. But Africa did the right things, but then that increased financing did not come. So it's almost a third blow to the growth prospects right now. Africa needs, of course, to uh, undertake significant public investments in roads and power uh, in broadband, in ports, uh, in airport facilities, in water and sanitation, just like all the rest of the world is a kind of stimulus and a way to achieve long-term sustainable development. But it needs financing for that. And if the credit markets have completely dried up, if the aid isn't coming, then Africa knows what to do but can't do it. And this kind of uh, brings in, in the context of, I mean, this, this brings up the point of really how important is Africa? I mean, do you think that rapid expansion of, of developing countries in Africa can help to stabilize these markets? Or, I mean, d does the continent really matter in the greater scheme of things? The continent is not a huge weight in the global macroeconomy or in the global stimulus, but it also should not be ignored. Africa needs in infrastructure investment maybe 30 or 40 billion dollars a year minimum uh, just to get the road network, the power grid and, and uh, other basic infrastructure in place. Who would sell that? Uh, that would be major companies in the United States, in Europe, in Japan for a lot of the machinery, a lot of the uh, underlying structures, the fiber, the power plants, the a grid and so on. And so Africa could be part of a worldwide stimulus if reliable long-term financing is made available to help build out a desperately needed infrastructure. The, that would generate aggregate demand that would redound on our own companies in the rich world as well as on the African economy. So in my view, it would truly be a win-win proposition. Another interesting part of that win-win is that Africa has tremendous renewable energy resources, which is also good for the whole world by taking pressure off of uh, the scarce hydrocarbons, for example. So Africa is really uh, the most replete region in the world with solar power. There ought to be huge expansion of financing for large-scale implementation of solar in Africa. Uh, not only uh, would that be great for Africa's development, its stimulus, uh, our companies that would be suppliers, but it would add a third win to the win-win, and that's environmental sustainability. So we could have a triple win if we help to organize the kind of financing programs to build large-scale infrastructure in this continent. Good for our companies, good for Africa, good for global sustainability. And the uh, IMF has forecast that uh, Sub-Saharan Africa needs 25 
uh, billion US dollars. Are they way off the mark? Well, that's uh, at a minimum of what it needs because in uh, real flows to achieve the Millennium Development Goals, it needs about $80 billion a year of help. And what I'd like to see the IMF do is not only make uh, projections, but help to raise the funds. And not just its own short-term funds that have to be repaid in two or three years or can't be used, the kind of window dressing for reserves, but real development financing that builds roads and power plants and power grids, real development aid as promised that could be used to renovate agriculture in this continent, that could be used to control disease and so on. What should be done is known. What is being done is a tiny part of what should be done. And what's holding them back? What's holding uh, Africa back at this point is the failure of the rich world to honor very explicit promises. The rich world said, you do your thing in Africa, get your policy framework right, uh, make your programs transparent, get them scalable, we'll be there to help finance it. These are, I've been at every one of these meetings where these things have been promised in the year 2000. Uh, in the year 2002, in the year 2005, at uh, many, many events. Numbers, uh, very explicit. Uh, how much should come, hasn't come. Uh, and then uh, the rich countries say, well, I don't know, you know, maybe it's a little hard, we have a budget squeeze and so forth. Uh, and this is really quite unacceptable.